<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Summit, week two. Very excited today to have a special guest, somebody that I consider a huge inspiration, and some of you may know him already as well. I'd like to welcome Dane Maxwell, partner and co-founder of The Foundation. Dane, welcome. Hey, Jesse. Thanks for asking me to come on. My pleasure, man. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us here. Yeah, so, I love it. Yeah, you know, as we kick off, for anybody that's not familiar with you and, and what you're up to, and I know a lot of people that uh, follow Lifestyle Entrepreneur and that I talk with always tell me, man, hello everybody, welcome back. Oh, you got might want to mute that in the background. <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> you can just give us a, an overview of, of your uh, what the foundation is up to nowadays and what you guys do and focus on, and then we can dial back the clock and sort of unpack how you got to this point uh, and go from there. We teach people how to build the most lucrative business model online. So we teach people how to build software as a service companies, and we teach them how to build these companies like the actual business of software. So you don't have to know, you don't have to have an idea, you don't have to know anything about software. I mean, the high level stuff is nice to know, but we teach you that. You don't have to know how to write the code. And you don't need to have much money to get started. You need some, but not a lot. We're talking a thousand or two. Um, the rest of the money comes from customers who pre-buy your product to fund the development for you. So we might be getting a little too specific at this point. But what makes us really different and vastly different from the other uh, create business programs is one that we're established in software and very few are there. Two, I have a very successful software business myself. Well, very successful from my standards, maybe not other people's. And then um, three, we focus on the deep inner game of entrepreneurship. So we focus on the mindset and also the emotional realm of entrepreneurship. The, 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 the game of entrepreneurship is not played at the level that most people play it at. It's not played at the what do I do, what step do I take uh, level. That's not where entrepreneurship is really played. It's actually played on the emotional level. So what we find is that um, we, t we started teaching people how to build software, Jesse, and um, we found that people weren't very successful. And so I started watching them. And when you watch people, it's during implementation where all this emotion comes about. Like, as soon as someone starts implementing, all this doubt, I don't know how to do this, I'm overwhelmed, I'm not good enough, this isn't working, like, just paralyzation, total paralyzation. And, and, and if they're not emotionally aware and they don't know how to emotionally navigate that, they will not start a business, no matter how hard they try, no matter how many years they've tried. So if you're the kind of person that's wanted to start a business for a while and you just can't seem to, quote, get things figured out, it's likely because you're missing this mindset and this emotional this emotional component and how to navigate through that because starting a business is really simple, but you know what? It's emotionally brutal at times. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to be with the emotions, whew, it's really hard. Oh, man. It's not, it's not impossible. I think it's so fascinating how you guys take that approach because there's so many programs or I see new ones popping up all the time. This is uh, we'll show you how to start a business online and, and work for yourself. But the more I found out about the foundation and as I've gotten to know you, it seems that, uh, or tell me if I'm wrong, but you guys start with the mindsets and the, I guess as the name suggests, the foundation for, for entrepreneurship, which may not be what people think. And I was curious on how you know, when you said you watch people start business, did you have uh, a way to actually, like, look over their shoulder, or was it through discussions or conversations that helped you triangulate in and identify that the emotional piece is so supportive and, indeed, perhaps uh, the uh, the go-no-go no go point before people even begin building a business? What, what sort of led you to that focus on mindset and, and emotional readiness for entrepreneurship? Well, I think what led me there is probably what leads anyone to just about anything, which is a massive amount of frustration. <laughs> um, you know, the, do, do you go to the dentist when your tooth doesn't hurt, or, like, do you wait until your teeth hurt? 
I avoid, yeah, I avoid it until it's more or less a necessity. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> no, no. You too. I had three years, and my back too started hurting, and then I just went and got a cavity filled, and now I probably won't be back for another three years. And that, that's why dentistry, I think, is a frustrating profession for a lot of dentists because, you know, you know what you should do, but, you know, you're not doing it, and you don't go until there's a lot of pain. So this just to say, for the foundation, I was experiencing a lot of pain and a lot of frustration with students having a lack of results. You know, in our, in our first foundation class, we had 88 students join, and three of them graduated with software businesses, so less than 5%. Mm. And... And what was, what was really fascinating, though, is that the other 25 that made it to the end, so 88 joined the first foundation, and I'd say 30 of them were there at the end, um, which, you know, it's just like any Jenny Craig weight loss program. You know, a bunch of people are going to join Jenny Craig, and then at the end, this is just natural. And it's, not, it's not a reflection of the quality of the program, except it was because this is our first class, and we only had three. So... And the three people that were successful, one of them is now doing 300 grand a month, another is now doing 40, 45, 40 plus grand a month, and the other one, last I talked a few months ago, is doing 25 grand a month. So these guys are really, really cranking on their software businesses. And then the other 27, they're doing other things, like they're doing like e-commerce, or they're doing blogging, or they're doing whatever. However, what about the other 60, or 58? What happened to them? Do you know what happened? Or did you have some way to do a, an exit poll or, or stay in touch with them after the fact to improve? Because I know now you guys have like tripled or quadrupled enrollment size. And... Yeah. We, we did, I mean, I did phone calls with the students every day. You know, I'm with them every day. And so I just saw it. It was just plain as, plain as day. If you're in it every day, you can, it's, plain, it's in plain sight. Well, it wasn't actually in plain sight at all. What happened is I kept getting like tactics and they would get stuck and I give another tactic they get stuck I give another tactic they get stuck another tactic they get stuck before long I'm like what's going on and so I was like okay uh, show me how you're implementing this tactic and then they would be like well all right I go here and I do this I do this and I would, wait wait hold on a second why are you doing it that way oh well because I think X Y Z and then I feel A B C and I was like what oh wow. Okay, so let's work with that. Something that may have seemed intuitive to you in terms of how to actually implement the strategy or the tactics you were teaching may have just been not even in the realm of experience for people that were going through the material. Yeah. Because then I know of, uh, more recently, after that first year, I've heard a couple of the calls. I think you do like the uh, replacing limiting beliefs calls. Uh, some of them are available on uh, the foundation site. And it's really fascinating to hear you drill down and, and get to whatever the actual underlying cause or obstacle or objection was, an emotional level or a belief level, and then uh, helping actually coach people through that. What are, what are some of the results you've seen? And maybe if you want to share any of the tactics for identifying the real underlying uh, obstacles that people face in entrepreneurship. But uh, how did the results also differ after you started focusing on that uh, and, and perhaps prioritizing it in the curriculum. Once you get the emotional stuff figured out, the results typically take care of themselves. Hmm. That's a really good quote. I should really write that. <laughs> I heard it here first, Dane Maxwell. <laughs> I should write that down. Um, once you get the emotional stuff figured out, the results take care of themselves. Okay, I'm tempted to tell a, a, a sort of tangential story, but instead I won't. I'll go into, um, unless we have time later. All right, so there's this, uh, I'll tell another one. Uh, so there's a student in the foundation, and I won't use his name because he's asked me not to because I used his name in one of the other interviews, and he was upset with me, understandably. I was like, shoot, okay, I won't use your name in the future, so I'm not going to use his name now. Six, foundation is a six-month program. We're five months into the program. This guy has no results to speak of. He's taken action just as much as anyone else. We had 300 people in the foundation that year instead of 88. 
which by the way, we had like 20 some people graduate with software companies. So we were like, went up on like a less than 5% to a more than almost, I think we actually had a 12 and a half percent success rate. So we, we quadrupled our success rate by focusing on the emotional stuff. Nice. And this is actually awesome because you, you, you can take, you can take, well, this is pretty fascinating. You can take your, your step-by-step framework, keep it the same, and then just add the emotions to them. So it's like, so what happens is we, I create the content, we create the content and the foundation from an emotional place. So, um, you know, you might ask, when it comes to um, coming up with business ideas, how do you feel? Overwhelmed, uh, insecure, all the good ideas are taken, I get a good idea and then I find competition, I feel bummed, and they have all these feelings, and then I create the content from an emotional foundation. So I'm like meeting people where they're at. So that's that's how you create the content. But then above that, you don't actually have to change your content much. You just add in the emotional component to it. So that during this step, you're likely to feel X, Y, Z. And then people are like, oh, I'm supposed to feel like crap? Oh, cool, okay. But <laughs> what I've found actually is like, you know what makes me feel better personally is if I'm feeling terrible and a person's like, Dude, that's totally normal. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh wow, cool. I'm okay. It's okay. I'm I, I am okay feeling what I feel. So anyway, this guy's five months into the program. No results to speak of yet. Taking lots of action. We're on a one-on-one -on -one call, and I just get angry with him. And I'm like, dude, what is going on? Like, this is I'm getting frustrated. Like, we've worked a lot together, and you're still just not getting it. What's the deal? And I didn't say it quite like that. I was much more loving on the call. I just said. Stanley, I'm no, or shoot, uh, that's just his first name. Um, forget I said that. Uh, in the in the call, I just asked him, "Hey, man, what are you? What's going on for you? Like, let's let's examine the stopping point for you. Let's examine the point where you always get stuck. So now, five months in, he has the same cycle. Starts starts in a market, starts finding an idea, gets some traction with the idea, fails. New market." Starts getting traction with the idea, gets to the idea, bails. Another market traction to the idea, bails every time. Okay, so there's your pattern. That's your pattern. Within your pattern, you can become emotionally aware. So what's going on for you when you bail? And he's like, I'm afraid to make a decision. Like, oh, where do you feel that in your body? He's like, I feel it in my stomach. So then I applied uh, a muscle testing technique, applied kinesiology, and you can look up the stuff for this on YouTube. It's not scientifically based or anything like that, but it works very well for me, and it's helped people become free. So that's what I focus on. It is in the more woo-woo realm, um, but it's fascinating, and it works most of the time. I, uh, applied from uh, David Hawkins' work from Power Versus Force and the kinesiological muscle testing. Yes, it's applied from David Hawkins. And if we zoom off to the side here, I'm a huge fan of Hawkins. I've turned his books into pieces of art for my room. Oh, so nice. this is actually David Hawkins' uh, scale of consciousness. I run uh, this right next to my computer, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up for a second. You get there. Yeah, this is the, the map of consciousness of David Hawkins' research. I think the same thing you got. Yeah. Very fascinating. But, uh, yeah, anyhow. So um, that's apl applied kinesiology. Uh, it's called muscle testing. And some people believe in it. Some don't. I just, you know, just, I just do what works for, for me, and that's what's working for me right now. So I muscle test this feeling in his stomach. How old was he when he got this feeling? And I go through all the ages, and age 14, we get something. And I was like, okay, 14. So I'm like, hey, man, what happened when you were 14 years old? And he said, oh, nothing. <laughs> That's usually what happens. Nothing. I can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. <laughs> oh, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. What happened when you were 14? And he goes, oh, crap. I made a decision on my own, and my mom reamed me for it. Mm. I felt so embarrassed, so humiliated, so just 
just t so much shame that I made the wrong decision that I decided right there that I'm incapable of making decisions. And I was like, so tell me, this pattern of not making decisions, has it shown up in any other area of your life? And he says, well, yeah, I've switched between five different majors in college. I was like, oh, gosh, how does that feel? He's like, dude, I'm exhausted. I'm 26. So what happened is we went into that feeling. And if emotions are like feelings, I'm going to grab something real quick. Yeah. Okay. If emotions are like feelings, um, well, emotions are like feelings, sorry. Uh, my mind's a little spacey uh, today. So if if this this thing is a candle, can you see it very well? Is it clear? Yeah, it looks good. Do you see where the initial level of the wax was? Yeah. See where it's at now. If we light this candle, and we keep it going, it's going to burn the wax. Now, if, if the wax is like an emotion, well, then you have to feel the emotion until the wax is, is gone. So for, for this guy, his emotion was so suppressed since 14 and so bottled up and so unconscious. You know, I asked him, what, where were you at? What happened when you are 14? Oh, nothing. I can't remember anything. Yeah, that's exactly right. You can't remember anything because your unconscious mind or your conscious mind, one of the two, is blocking you from remembering this painful memory because there's so much pain to feel. It wants you to forget about it. In the meantime, it runs your life entirely. You've picked five different majors. You've had trepidation around every major decision. This guy in the foundation, he went through every single one of the 300 members. Every single one of the 300 members had heard of him. He had asked a question to every single member in the foundation. He had even went on and asked my business partner's girlfriend a question. He actually found my number and called me at Friday night while I was at a hockey game, and I picked up to ask me a question because he was questioning himself all the time. So imagine just the un endless energy of questioning yourself all the time, like always doubting yourself, making a decision, going two steps back, making a decision, going two steps back, making a decision, going two steps back for five months. Well, that was just with me. Uh, this is his whole life since 14. So what happened is we went into that feeling, and it doesn't go as slow. This is a bad example because the wax takes a long time to melt. Um, and now we went into the feeling, and it was up here. And so I just asked him to go into his stomach and to not be afraid of the feeling and to feel it. And it maybe sound a little weird, but I'm a super loving guy and I'm super kind and really sensitive and I really care and I deeply love people. And so I tell him, I'm like, dude, I love you and I'm here for you. I've got your back. You don't have to be alone while you feel this. And so don't be afraid of it. So he goes in and he feels it in his stomach and he starts crying and sobbing in about two or three minutes is all. And after two or three minutes, he takes a deep breath. <sighs> he goes, wow, a lot better. And what happened is the wax went down past below to like gone. And so I said, what happened? So that thought, you don't know how to make decisions. You second guess yourself. How, how does that thought sit with you now? And he's like, that thought doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That thought, I don't understand it really. I don't even know why I even thought that in the first place now at this point. So what thought exists there now? And he's like, I can decide whatever I want or something along those lines. Now, this is about a 30-minute call. And in about, let me shut that Facebook beeping off. It was about a 30-minute call. And at the end of that call, I just let him marinate in the most amazing feeling he's had in a while. He, he, he's felt, when you release a traumatic emotion like this, it is just pure bliss afterwards. And, you know, the, the unconscious mind doesn't have any concept of time. So what happened when he was 14, every time he, if, if he's got a decision to make at 26, it's almost like the unconscious mind doesn't have any 
That works to your benefit and your disadvantage. It works to your benefit because you can go and heal it right now. You can heal it. As soon as you find it and feel the emotion to completion, now you're free from it. And depending on how traumatic or untraumatic your, your childhood or your life growing up is, you may have a lot of this or a little of this. And I had really great parents, and I still had, you know, I'm still going through stuff and, and feeling stuff to completion. But anyway, after he did this, within two weeks, he got his first $10,000 deal. Oh, that's awesome. And it wouldn't have happened without this because, you know, how could you ever expect a guy who second guesses himself to be on the phone with someone selling a $10,000 deal? He wouldn't have the security and any decision to be able to like. wouldn't have the full, full force of his uh, capability working to his benefit. Yes. That's pretty inspirational. So, it's, it's almost as though yeah. like puts it on a loop or on a repeat when you have – an experience like that and like you said with the unconscious mind not having a sense of time it's just playing out over and over with different manifestations of the same decision or indecision point but it, it's almost like would you agree that going through and actually feeling it with a supportive uh, environment that you provided that all of that avoidance over years maybe even a decade or more was just to avoid actually feeling that two to three minutes of trauma and, and release. Because it sounds like afterwards there was an inflection point and things started to turn around almost instantaneously. Yeah. I remember, you know, he used to call and leave these really shaky voicemails like, hey, 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 Dane, it's, it's uh, you know, so-and-so, and I'm just wondering about, you know, da 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 da, -da. At the end of the foundation, he told me, he goes, hey, Dane, it's come to my attention that you've been talking about me to members in the foundation. Well, I'd like you to know that I'm absolutely kicking butt or whatever right now, and I've got XYZ deals in the pipeline, and I appreciate that you're recognizing and acknowledging me in front of the group. This is Stanley signing off. Oh, I said his name again. <laughs> I'm so bad. <laughs> uh, anyway, like, he's such an amazing dude. You know, like, he, he's, he transformed from that one. That one thing. That's awesome. And it, would you say, is that, I mean, it certainly sounds like um, a dramatic transformation, but going through the foundation, are there are a number of experiences like this, a number of uh, real inflection points in people's lives as it relates to entrepreneurship, but also healing, um, these limiting beliefs or, or thought patterns that have been on repeat, perhaps even unconsciously. I think yeah, it's a different approach to, to the entrepreneurial process than many people uh, have been exposed to or are familiar with, so it's super fascinating to hear this, and people are saying on the chat there, this is amazing, I love how this is all about the process, and you can uh, focus it around any business idea, I'm all ears, so this is definitely resonating with people. Oh, wow, I didn't know there's a chat. Man, we could talk about, we can talk about a lot of stuff like this, you know. This is, this is the juice of life. You know, when, I, uh, it, in fact, I wanted to, on, on that very topic, uh, I almost jumped the gun, but I know that before doing the foundation, you had started a string of businesses uh, on your own, giving you that, you know, the experience and the hands-on, uh, you know, knowledge that you now are able to teach to hundreds and hundreds of people. And I imagine you went through no small share of this uh, emotional development and uh, trial and error in your own businesses before the foundation. So really, I was wondering, um, and I've asked this to everybody on the summit, is the environment that you grew up in, was that supportive to entrepreneurship? Was it encouraging of going through uh, trial and error, or did it seem like just the biggest leap to, to start your own business? Did it seem like going against the grain to to be an entrepreneur. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I uh, I didn't have any of this stuff when I started out. You know, when I started out, I just simply ignored thoughts that didn't make me feel good. You know, if I had a, if I had a thought and it didn't make me feel good, I'd just ignore it. Now we know that thoughts don't feel the completion.
action, and then once you feel the thought, complete, feel the feeling, you know, it's reading a lot of Hawkins lately, and his latest book is called Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender. It was just released, by the way. It's like mind-blowingly awesome. I got it. And it's so good, Jesse. He he uh he talked about um one emotion can have like a thousand thoughts. So if you handle the emotion, the thoughts pff, disappear. They fall away. But if you don't handle the emotion, you stay up in the thoughts, you really drain yourself and you get super tired. And so uh, self-awareness is the greatest hmm, how do I say this? Self-awareness is the most supportive way that I've found to feel happy and free, I suppose. Um, Self-awareness is the most supportive way for you to live a life that you actually legitimately want. And self-awareness is raised not by being aware of your thoughts, but by being aware of your feelings. So if you just monitor feelings, like this wax, and you just feel the feeling, just let us feel it. Let Your mind is going to race. Your mind's going to go all different directions. Just come back to your body and feel the feeling until it's gone, and the mind just kind of naturally takes care of itself. And, and happiness and joy are actually, believe it or not, our natural states. It's the most natural, effortless thing to be happy and joyful. Mm. It takes work to be unhappy. It takes work to be afraid. Think about all the work that this guy did suppressing that 14-year-old, that trauma. Once he relieved, there was no more work involved. It just happiness naturally ensued. Now, I don't know if this one thing actually made him happier or not. But I just want people to know, like, happiness is natural. It's your automatic go-to once you have all this stuff figured out. And the pathway to growth is not a process of addition. It's not what book do I read, what business do I start, what girl do I date, how much money do I have, what friends do I get, how much respect can I have. Because I can tell you, I've had, I've had, uh, I've got plenty of money. I've got respect from tens of thousands of people. Not even respect, but I'm revered. Uh, I'm loved by tens of thousands. I've got seven friends living in my house that uh, all I all mentor and we all mentor and inspire each other. And and I've and I've dated some of the most gorgeous women inside and out, like beautiful minds, beautiful hearts, and none of it worked. None of it made me happy. None of it. And I'm so deeply saddened by this realization because I worked so hard for those things. Mm. They didn't work. And I, and I remember Jim Carrey, he's got this amazing quote, and it's like, I don't know if you, have you heard it, he said, I wish everyone could be rich and famous like me so that they could see that it's not the answer. And I tell you what, what I found, the best thing I found for happiness, the best thing I found is for the answer is feeling your feelings and surrendering your feelings to God. Hmm. Not just like, oh, here, God, take my feelings, but feeling them and surrendering them to the point of completion and handing them off to God. That has been, the, that has produced the highest states of bliss in my entire life. And I'm, I'm talking like, I've been in blitzed out states so high and elevated that I don't even want to talk. Because, like, language and words would, like, ruin the state I'm in. Like, I just want to, like, go up to people and put my hands on their shoulders and look at them in the eye and just, like, blanket them in love and, like, give them a hug and sit on a sofa in a room all by myself and, like, literally ecstasy. I felt ecstasy. Now, I've tried a form of ecstasy once, Molly, one time. And then I feel like I had a hole in my brain the next day. I was like, I'm never doing that again. But when I did it once, I was, like, one of the happiest times of my life. I don't recommend this. I was at a concert and I was just super happy. And then I was listening to a Hawkins interview. It sounds like I'm such a Hawkins groupie. <laughs> I was listening to a, a Hawkins interview and he said what drugs do is drugs blot out 
all the all the negative dark stuff that gets in the way from you being happy. Your natural state is happy. Just remove all the stuff in the way that prevents you from being happy. So in other words, the process of happiness and growth is not a process of addition. It's not what new book can I read, what new process can I take, what new thing can I do. The process of growth and happiness is not a process of addition, it's a process of subtraction. And what this guy did is he subtracted that emotion from his life at age 14. Now he could have gone to self-help seminars and read books for the rest of his life. None of it would have worked. Maybe it would have. I don't know. We can't say none of it. But why not just go in for a few minutes and feel the feeling? So I, I'm, on, I'm on a bit of a tangent here, but I just want you guys to know that, you know, um, being successful and, and, and money and, and, and respect and, and all these things that you're free, and maybe even having freedom and traveling the world, and uh, none of that worked. And I was very, very disillusioned. Um, and so I just, I just, I give you guys that key warning now. Um, feel your feelings so you can be happy, because I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been. And, it, and the happiness grows every day. And if it doesn't, that's okay. If I feel like crap some days, like, you know, today I'm processing some heavier feelings that are coming up, and I'm just being with them, you know. Ooh, it's tough sometimes, but I just want you guys to know that the world is played on the emotional realm. And this is why the Foundation is such a successful enterprise. And this is why I believe the Foundation will become the best place to go for entrepreneurs who want to get started when they have nothing. Mm, that is very powerful. And, uh, and it's certainly resonating here. People are saying, I'm amazed that he knows about the body connection. Uh, says it's so true. The best leaders know who they are and what they do best. What an extraordinary person. Mm. So this is certainly landing uh, with people. And I'm thinking back through some of my own entrepreneurial and life experiences, and it's it's so true what you mentioned. Like even in what could objectively be seen as like the highest highs or moments of uh, adulation or or success, at most it's fleeting if you don't face the other aspects of the the totality of being alive and being a person. And it sounds like what I'm hearing is that you know this process of subtraction instead of addition. Hopefully that's a relief for people that have, you know, read every book and tried ten different courses and think that if they could just learn that one strategy that's going to make a difference, that maybe it's actually the opposite and you could peel away some of the layers that have been blocking or, or covering or holding back from moving forward or, or fully feeling one of the feelings like Dane's describing. And so if it is a process of subtraction, is it subtracting just the is it identifying through perhaps a bodywork technique and then processing through or are there other ways and other things that you can subtract and take away to let that naturally occurring state of happiness and joy manifest more frequently more fully and to a greater uh, effect no I think it's pretty much just feeling your feelings man okay fair enough uh, and, <laughs> and that can be a wild ride sometimes, depending on what's going on. Well, so in this in the book Letting Go, he talks about this guy who um, he's traveling and he loses his passport. And he's going to travel on a trip and he, and he and he's like lost his passport. And if he can't find his passport, he can't go on the trip. He starts panicking like crazy, searching frantically everywhere for his passport. Like oh, like oh my god, and then he remembered to use the letting go technique. He sat down and he asked himself, what feeling am I, what am I avoiding feeling right now? And surprisingly, the emotion that came up was grief. Grief that he might miss out on a romantic relationship with a partner. Grief that he might miss out on some fun. And so he applied the letting go technique and he just said, you know, I'm not afraid of this feeling. I'm asking for more of it. Let me feel more of it. Let me feel more of it. I surrender. I surrender. And he feels it and feels it. And then goes up into his mind and spends and comes and feels it and feels it. And before long, the feeling is gone. After the feeling is gone, boom, he instantly remembers where his passport is. 
and he came to the conclusion that there's not much grief. You know, if if he can't make the trip, he'll, he'll miss the person he's going to spend with, but he's he's not worried about the relationship ending anymore because, you know, two weeks is not enough time for to damage a relationship, and then the business stuff can always be taken care of other time as well. And so he starts to see the event through true, true lens. But what the fascinating thing is, you know, he's panicked and freaked out by the passport. What he's avoiding feeling is grief. When he feels the grief to completion, all of a sudden, boom, he's able to remember where the passport is. Now, this is a huge point, and I'm still playing with this myself. So I'm, just, I'm just, just really finally starting to dial this in. As soon as the grief was felt, it was almost like the unconscious blocking of where the passport was could be found. All the trauma and all the grief and all the emotion was actually preventing his mind from the most obvious solution. The passport was, you know, top shelf of a drawer or something, super easy place to find. But with all this grief trapped and with all this work trying to, like, find it, like, his unconscious mind is blocked from actually the answer. Hmm. So if there are difficult situations you're facing in your life, if there's a lot of anxiety in your life, you're drawn different things, go ahead and ask yourself, what am I avoiding feeling? Take a deep breath in. Let that feeling come up. And then surrender to it. Let it overtake you. Sob, scream, get angry, cry. And then feel the completion, and usually you'll be able to approach the situation with a very rational mind. That's super powerful. Do you, I mean, do you recommend, is this a practice that you do on your own? Because I know that you facilitate these experiences for people in the foundation and provide that container of, of care and love and support. Do you think it's any more difficult to uh, to just hear these words and then and practice this by yourself, or would you recommend having you know a few friends or somebody that you trust hold hold the space for you to go through and process some of these perhaps very difficult feelings through to completion? I, I wonder oftentimes if I'm doing a disservice to myself by doing it with just myself. I'm tempted to give a clear-cut answer, but I don't know if there is one. If there is one, it would probably be to find a partner. You know, blocks and limiting beliefs are blocks because they're blocks, because they're blocks, which means you can't see them. The 14-year-old trauma, hey, what happened when you were 14? Nothing. He legitimately believed that. Mm -hmm. And I said, ha, huh, no. Close your eyes, deep breath in. What comes up when you focus on age 14? And then, you know, it takes... The most effortless way is probably with someone else. Yeah, because as, as I'm hearing this, um, just by not knowing your own blind spots, by not knowing what it is that needs the attention, I think you had... Uh, insight into that age because of the the muscle testing, so I can see the yep. benefit to to working with somebody else or somebody that's familiar uh, with this type of process, so that you know where to look or what to to focus on feeling. I have, uh, if you want, Jesse, I can tell you one more example. Um, yeah, or we or I'd love to. I think everybody on here would like to hear that too. If people are. <laughs> Excited by this unexpected approach to entrepreneurship through the heart, through the feelings. Yes. yes, yes. Entrepreneurship through the heart is exactly what it is. And it's, oh, it just brings tears up because, like, you know, like there's tears of sadness, there's tears of happiness, and then there's tears when you feel like you've come home. And that's the tears that come up for me now. Is like, yes, entrepreneurship through the heart. It doesn't have to be a struggle. It doesn't have to be an anxiety-driven, cra crazy, anxious, clinging and grasping. To, oh, I found this. Yes, I'm finally going to be free. Oh, no. Like, it just can be an effortless journey. And it can only be an effortless journey if you're feeling your feelings. Well, I'm t I, don't, I don't like it when I jump to generalizations like that. But I just want to pose the possibility, pose the thought, that can entrepreneurship really be effortless? Mm. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm writing my first book right now, and it's a book on how I have looked for happiness in women, and it's always broken my heart. And you know what? It's broken the women's hearts that I've been with. And I'm going through a just de devastating breakup at the moment. And, you know, I'm just two weeks out or three weeks out, and what a crippling situation. Like, it is, it has completely humbled my ego, you know, to the point where, like, if I feel good, I don't, I don't ever take, I don't take that feeling good for granted because I know the next second I could be brought to my knees, you know. And that sort of humility is, for a stronger guy like me who thinks he's got everything figured out, I'll... <laughs> that sure showed me. Um, so, anyway, I'm writing this book on my patterns with women and the emotional things I've been trying to satisfy with them. Why am I bringing this up? Where was I going before this? Well, how the how the um... oh, I got it. Okay, you got it. Yes, yes. I'm so wrapped up in this in this book, and I'm I'm just all over the place right now. So. Coming back to square one, business can be effortless. So I get this idea for this book, and the book comes to me when I'm sobbing. I'm I'm on a cruise, and I'm with my guy friend, and I was supposed to be on this cruise with my girlfriend, but we, I broke up with her, and so I'm on this cruise, and it's like just the longest cruise of my life, and I'm feeling my feelings, and you know, um, I'm in this hot tub, and I'm about ready to burst out into tears, so I jet out of the hot tub, I go into the corner of this space, and I just surrender, and I just tear up and sob like I haven't sobbed in a long time. And while I have, I start, this this book idea comes to me. I don't even think it was a book, but it was just like, you know, my crazy, crazy, desperate, panicked search for women, you know, and all the broken hearts along the way, or something like that, you know, it's whatever the title, and then all these table of contents start coming to me. They just flow. Effortless. Effortless creation in this process of total sobbing, total sadness, total grief, like, boom, this download of, like, I don't know what it was, uh, God, God-given God inspiration. That's definitely true. And, and so I think, gosh, you know, writing a book, this is going to be a lot of work. And, you know, that clinched effort word comes in. I surrender it. I surrender the effort. The next day, I'm on a phone with a guy, and I tell him about the idea, and then I thought, how can I make this book effortless? Well, what if I have this guy interview me on all the table of contents and ask me about them and help me flush out the chapters in an interview, and then I could just listen to the audio and type my answers out? What about editing? I know someone who can do editing. I send her a Facebook message. She calls me in five minutes. Hey, I need you to edit a book for me. It'll be done by Tuesday. You know, it's Sundays. It's 30% done right now. Like, I'm just cranking it. Um, then, then I say, how can I launch this book so it gets out to men everywhere, so men everywhere can be free of this thing that I'm, that I'm just currently stuck in? And, and I, I call up my, uh, my roommate, who's launched a couple number one bestsellers in Kindle. And I was like, hey, can I have you, can I pay you to launch this book for me? He said, yes. Boom, boom, boom. In 10 minutes, I have the whole book lined up, the whole structure lined up, effortless creation. Total effortless creation. Now, it's not always this way. Now, the guy riding in the car with me, he's like, you know, Dane, business can't be effortless all the time. You know, you have all this money, so you can pay people to do this stuff. It can't be effortless for me. I don't have the money. And I said, well, no, that's not true at all. If I didn't have money, I would just include them. I'd give each person 10 20% of whatever profit or revenue it made. I'd give them a profit share in the end. You know, I don't need the money. And they, they, they don't. It's, it's not about the money. He's like, oh yeah, you know. So this just just tell you the story of like how this idea came to be, and it's not even like I'm not trying to publish a best-selling book. I just want men to be more aware of how they damage women, like I have, and 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 and, and I just want this message to be out to the world. And it was just this natural, effortless creation in the process of total sadness. Book title, chapters, interviewed. Running launched by this guy that I'm going to pay to do it, 
and I could have done it without any of the without any of the money either. It was just one effortless flow creation. Now, now I will tell you that my biggest business is paperlesspipeline.com. Paperlesspipeline.com. Go check it out. Um, it's it's it makes it generates over sixty grand a month in revenue, and I collect about twenty to twenty five percent profits each month. About ten to fifteen grand in profit each month comes to me from this software business. The other seventy five percent goes to pay the CEO and the whole team that runs the company. So this is purely hands off profit pass, pa passive profit income. It took me three years to build the business up to that point where I was working on it mostly full time, but now it's completely hands off. That was not an effortless process. That took a lot of friggin' work. Um, and could that have been made effortless? Maybe. Could you do it all? Maybe if I get the fraction of the effort. <laughs> you know, I probably could. Like, but my body even resists that. You know, like there's something going on for me there. Like, you know, I went to Dan Sullivan's uh, strategic coach. And he's like, he asked the question, I want to change your thoughts. How can you connect your business and cut the amount you work in half? And immediately you're just like furious. You're like, oh, no freaking way. That's BS, man. I had to work four times as hard just to double my business, and I hate you for even suggesting. Oh, wait a second. Hmm, maybe this might work. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, so how can you 10x your business while working less than half? And and the, the process is, you know, it's just, add, just meditating on the question. You guys can come up with the answer. You guys don't need answers. It's Maybe you do. how that organizes your mind just to hear, you know, a proposition, like, it seems like an out of, out of reach question to 10x your business and cut the work in half. And after that initial resistance, if you actually think about it and say, well, what would the answers be? then it's funny how you immediately go from clinching up to, wait, that would be pretty damn great. How can I make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I want to point out one thing I picked up on listening with the book story, and I can't wait to read it as soon as that's ready to check out. But it sounds like that point where it became effortless blossomed out of uh, – consciously feeling what sounds like an intense set of emotions uh, almost in the very moment that you were feeling them, wasn't it? And so does that, does that reinforce, if you agree, um, your perspective that through that really conscious feeling of whatever is coming up at the time, that that's the point of leverage to have either effortless creativity, effortless idea generation, effortless... Uh, sight as to how you could implement something with, you know, in the, with the least amount of work possible. Because I'm picturing you sobbing it in a corner on a cruise ship, jotting down a table of contents, and like, well, that sounds very intense. But if that was the moment of creation and everything else started to fall into place after, then the juice would definitely be worth the squeeze. Yeah. You know, I'm really good at feeling sadness. Notice how I've teared up maybe three times on this. And I want to show up as authentically and real as I can because I crave that personally and I feel uh, that the world is missing out on that depth. And I think it also gives other people permission to do it as well. And I think my higher global mission is to help men connect to their feelings. <clears throat> And I believe that a world with men connected to their feelings could be uh, a little hard to receive, you know. It would be the difference between a guy trying to punch you in the face versus, like, being like, man, I feel really hurt when you do that. Like, a drastically different world with men connected to their feelings. And so I'm really good at feeling sadness, I'm not that good at feeling anxiety. You know, I, uh, I, bit, I bit my fingernails my whole life, except for like four or five years ago, I kicked the habit completely. But then going through this, this split, I've noticed that a couple of my fingernails I like to start picking at again. 
And and I do that, and I'm like, oh, crap, wait, what feeling am I avoiding right now when I do that? And it's anxiety, and anxiety is rooted in fear, and what's the fear of? And I'm still not able to really dial in and figure that one out because I'm not as good at feeling fear as I am feeling sadness. Mm. So for me, feeling sadness and being in a creation space for sadness, amen. Um, but feeling fear, feeling anger even, like, oh, those are, those are harder for me to feel, but I'm getting better at it. Getting better at it. Not all feelings are created equal, and, and 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 you know, I think a lot of the things with a lot of these feelings is there's just a basic fear to feel them anyway. You're, on some level, you're worried that you're going to die if you feel them, so you do anything to avoid it. But on the contrary, the uh, the opposite is true. It's, uh, it's more life than you could ever ever imagine. I mean, you're talking about blissed out states where. You know, it's almost like you took drugs, but you didn't. You know, that's where Hawkins lives. You know, Hawkins is on ecstasy all day long without any of the after effects. Oh yeah, well, and now he's in the, the afterlife, I believe. But yes. you know, he has many, many decades of having cleared out all the the cobwebs emotionally and getting to revel in the the resulting joy. And uh, it may go a little beyond the scope and time we have here, but I, I'm so landing with the referencing the map of consciousness and how you work through the different hierarchy of emotions. It's almost like people say the a chain's only as strong as the weakest link. It's almost like you can only feel the, the highest emotion after you've cleared out the lowest one that's still preventing you from from climbing up that ladder. Mm, that makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> I, I'm wondering. It's it's conjecture, but I've had similar experiences where you're talking about in what could be the total nadir, or you're you know, emotional, you're crying, and at the same time, it's like the fountain of creation is, is turning on, and you have a whole idea and blueprint for a book as a result of going into that, what was perhaps a painful or at least unpleasant state. And so I think that's a, an interesting takeaway, perhaps something nobody expected joining this call, to hear that really going in and feeling your emotions fully becomes one of the biggest points of leverage that you can have, especially for a more effortless, uh, less anxiety-prone journey through entrepreneurship, but, uh, but also for feeling a higher and more full range of emotions in total, as it sounds like uh, your experience. Being in blissed out, total ecstatic states, uh, but still being totally willing to go in and, and feel through the depths uh, or the darkness in between. People think they're after freedom, and when they get there, they realize that's not actually what they're after. What people are generally after is the creative spark, the most enjoyable feeling for most. For like, they've actually studied this from neuroscience. And I don't know this from reading it. Some dude just told me once, but I think it feels true that the most enjoyable state is living in the creative spark. You know, it's where you're just like creating. So like while I'm creating this book, pretty enjoyable. I'm creating the foundation, it's pretty enjoyable. I'm creating paperless pipeline, it's pretty enjoyable. Like just creation, creation, creation. Like why haven't I stopped why 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 make paperless pipeline and why make all this money, quote unquote? Why not just kick back? Because that's not nearly as much fun as creation. Like Amen. Yeah. So cre creative spark is what you're after. And, and to be in the creative spark all day long, well, the Dan Sullivan guy, the 10x and half the time, his business is like, what, $25 million a year. He takes 22 weeks off a year. He pays himself 15% revenue from his company. He works eight hours a day max, I think. That's what, that's what he did when I was there. I think maybe, maybe 10. He, he looks like he's 40 and he's 70 years old. Oh my and he loves and he loves what he does, and he's so vibrant and so youthful because he knows where his unique ability is. He knows the place where he can live in the creative spark all day long. And imagine you start work at the beginning of the day, and at the end of the day, you have more energy than when you started, and the whole process builds on itself. And you just get more and more youthful as you age. It seems like, you know, and that's because he's living in the creative spark, and it. You know, he's planning to live till he's 100 and something. Like, why stop working when you enjoy it so, so much? And so you're not after financial freedom. You're really after living in the creative spark. And, you know, so we've been talking about 
emotions and how to heal and how to feel them. And like, once you've felt emotions, once you're to an emptier space, now it's time to uh, kind of like push forward or pull forward, depending on however you, whatever state you're in. So um, just briefly making this tactical for just a second so people have something they can take away from this. Um, we don't believe in coming up with our own ideas at the foundation. I've started 22 different businesses from age 22 to 30, and 16 of them failed, 6 of them succeeded. The 16 that failed all had one thing in common. The 6 that succeeded all had the opposite thing in common. The 16 businesses that failed, they all were my own ideas. Every single one of them was my own idea. The six that succeeded, all those ideas were given to me by customers. They said, please, will you build me this? So I stopped coming up with my own ideas. Then they paid for the development of the product. I gave them the product free for life, and then I would just resell the product to other people for a profit. So the idea from the customer, they pay to build the whole product themselves, give it to them for life, then sell it to other people. What more abundant model could you get than that? So the foundation is based on a framework of spiritual abundance. And, and so unlimited abundance. Spiritual abundance, I don't know how I feel about saying that. But like, it's just an unlimited, there's a, the abundance is inexhaustible with a foundation framework. And it's fascinating because as I say that, I feel my body get kind of tight. And I'm wondering what that's about. Maybe it's not fully true. Maybe it's like 80% true that it's mostly abundant. I don't know. Is it true within the context of doing software businesses that uh, are providing solutions that customers identify that they need? It seems like with that as a constraint, why why couldn't it be true uh, for any different any different industry? Yeah, I don't know. I might have some limiting belief blockers going on because my body's tight. So wherever there's tightness in your body. It's definitely a place for you to examine. So if I were just to kind of practice examining that with the with the group right now, so you could see how emotional stuff usually works. What I'm feeling is a little bit of anger, and underneath anger is usually fear, and um, that fear is uh, I'm afraid of of being wrong, and um, and under afraid of being wrong, I'm afraid of uh, possibly not being liked. And under the fear of not being liked is be uh, either ridiculed or abandoned or unloved. And so if I were to if we were to do this for a while, I'd just sit and I'd feel that for a second and I would let it move. Um, but all that because I just don't want to be wrong, you know, covering up all these layers under underneath. Um, so, but the idea, the end goal for the foundation is for the framework to be completely abundant. And I don't think it's all the way there yet. It's pretty close. But we want to expand it beyond software to building physical products, you know, products for any kind of... The foundation is a six, five or six step framework um, for building a business from nothing when you have nothing. And it currently is in software, but the framework work works. Hopefully, we'll be testing it. I'm pretty sure it will on any different business model. So if we take uh, a, a successful student's example, clinicmetrics.com. I love this example so much. Uh, Carl Mattiola, he was working at Tesla Motors directly under Elon Musk, making a good six-figure salary and unhappy. And he felt guilty that he was unhappy. Like, why am I unhappy? Like, I have everything society told me I wanted, and I still feel unhappy. Damn it. And, and so he contacted physical therapy practices, and he asked them, hey, what do you use Microsoft Excel for in your business? Oh, we'll use Microsoft Excel to track all of our metrics, financial metrics and metrics like that for our physical therapy practice. He's like, well, why don't you use QuickBooks or you know, any other reporting package? Like, oh, you know, there's, there's none really available for physical therapy practices. He's like, well, are you happy with Excel? They're like, well, not really. We lose files. We have to email them back and forth. We have six different locations, so we can't like, see them all at the same time. And he's like, well, would you like me to turn this into a software product? And they said, yes. He said, great can you fund some of the development and I'll give it to you for a discount or free for life or whatever. And they said, yes. So he got about $5,000 in pre-sales from about five or six different physical therapy practices. He talked to 30 different physical therapy practices and about six of them said they wanted this product. Six out of 30, that was his green light. Then he went to a developer and said, hey, I've got six people that have already bought this product. It doesn't exist yet. 
I don't, well, in this case, he wanted to pay the developer, but the developer was like, dude, don't pay me anything. Just give me 10% of the revenues for the product for like two years. And so the agreement was he would work full time for six months, and then in return, he would get 10% of the revenues for two years. So he literally built this business starting from nothing. We didn't have an idea. No out-of-pocket cost, it sounds like, either. Yeah, no out-of-pocket cost. He actually got to keep the five grand. Went, went, went on a cruise. I don't know. No, he didn't. <laughs> but so that's like, you know, now that we've got the emotional stuff handled, it's now the talk, t- time to talk about tactics. And there are beautiful tactics that can greatly shortcut and speed up, speed up your path. And all those tactics are inside the foundation, and I'm happy to not keeping anything to my chest, happy to share it all with you here. We just want to create as many entrepreneurs in the world as possible. I think we want like a million entrepreneurs with their first paying customer by the year 2020. Mm, What a great ambitious goal. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to do it. Um, I kind of feel like, I always felt like a fraud saying it in the first year, but now I'm actually starting to believe it. (laughs) I think you're you're well on your way. I mean, with the growth year over year is what, like tripled, quadrupled, or more attendance each time you've run the foundation? First class, 88, second class, 300, third class, 650. That's amazing. And uh, people here are reflecting that as well, saying this is why the foundation is so amazing. You find out so many people understand you and who you're able to reach out to and connect with to feel the same. So. Oh, yeah. I promoted this interview to the foundation crew, so there's probably some members in here right now. Yes, there are. So it certainly looks like it. Any names that I recognize? Can you say a few of the names? We've got Kimberly Ferrari is here. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Ritchie. Yeah. Chris Taylor says you could probably stop wars by doing the, what you were talking about, focusing on uh, guys feeling their their feelings and emotions more. Yep, yep. Yeah. Brian Robinson here says, uh, yeah, he says, uh, he, <laughs> he says a couple things. Scrolling back up, so definitely got some some fans of the foundation on the on the call here, and some people are finding out about it for the first time, saying, "Wow, this sounds incredible!" Uh, it's so nice to have it laid out and clear and self-explanatory. Chris Taylor says, "I'm in it, and it's a lifestyle!" Exclamation! 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 And then he says, "Hi, Dane." <laughs> hey. So I met I met Chris. He played uh, he played while my guitar jumped weeps on the ukulele. Mm. It's like, oh, man. Like, You can learn to play that song. You're going to crush the foundation, man. You're in. You know, we have, we have an application process. And, and, you know, I think we rejected 50% of our applicants this year. What's that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, and he, he maybe screwed up one time. And he was, like, devastated. He like, missed one note. He's like, oh. And I was like, dude, there's, like, a thousand notes in that song. <laughs> You know, a bunch of more people now now speaking up. Tim Daniel says, hey, I'm in the foundation. Hey, Dane. Kevin uh, Showweiler says, dude, can't wait. Or Dane, can't wait for your book. Uh, Ark says hi. Oh. Kim really says hi, Tim. Ah, a whole bunch of people jumping on here. Yeah, cool. They're all, I'm familiar with all those names. I'm not surprised that they're on. They're wonderful people. Just imagine uh, imagine what the what, what can happen to a community of people when the leaders of the community are deeply driven by as much unconditional love as they can come. You know, you know, I'm as unconditional loving as I can be. You know, I'm still angry at times. I still can be judgmental at times. But, like, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a, a, if I'm as, un- I, my goal is to be unconditionally loving. And so that means that um, what happens is it starts to radiate to the whole community and the community starts to kind of elevate and, in a, in, a, in a community built on on this kind of level of vibration is it's uh, hmm, I don't know what it is Ooh, uh, yeah, it's and I think and I think it's timely and I think that the more people that follow your lead the better place the world would be and I would love to publicly acknowledge you that that's always been my experience of you as having just a huge heart huge emotional capacity but also just a, a total not a hard-headedness, but a, a drive and an unshakable confidence pursuing what you do in business uh, that's just, frankly, very inspirational. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So a um, so huge fan of, of you and what you've done and what you continue to do. 
Um, and I have no doubt that you'll be able to hit that goal by 2020, even if it's not clear exactly how it's going to happen. But I'm, a, I'm standing for a million people in the foundation by 2020. Well, you know, thank you, and thank you for the acknowledgement. Jesse, you're an amazing man, and your your journey to get to where you are is, like, so fascinating, and, like, I won't say anything about your past, but your past is awesome. And, like, as soon as I learned about, like, where you were and where you came from and what you were about, like, I was just, like, instant bros with you, and, like, it was so fun to hang out with you, like, um, so... Yeah, like if there's one, if there, if like if I could have a community and I could only have a set number of people or an unlimited number of people, I would, I would, I would want you there so bad. You know? Oh, bro, I really appreciate that. Feeling is definitely mutual. You're in my uh, trapped on a desert island. Must have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, the trapped, on a, the trapped on a desert island list. With, with I wanted to say capabilities. <laughs> yes, I, with internet capabilities, or not. You know, maybe we could just feel our feelings all day and eat coconuts. Uh, <laughs> That would be pretty I wanted, I wanted to say for the foundation, like what we're just we're starting to dream up is like how can we get Dane out of the foundation so that um, so that I'm not involved. I'll be involved, but like it won't be like just Dane. Um, so you know we're holding our next like because you know this this is a really important topic to bring up because you know personality based driven businesses are they work. You, know, you have Tony Robbins and things like that, but I I'm not. I'm not all that jazzed about stuff like that, and and you know I have a I have a more charismatic or magnetic personality speaking. I have a natural gift of speaking one to many people. I, for whatever reason, I hold people's attention uh, better than the average person, and people just like to naturally listen to me. And so, personality-driven business works pretty well for me. But I built businesses that were not personality-driven at all, like Paperless Pipeline. No personality bond. Well, actually, no, there was, but. It was in a personality-less industry. So now, foundation was primarily built on my personality starting, and we're transitioning as quickly away from that as we can. Now, just from an, just so you understand my entrepreneurial mind and where it's going from, we want the foundation to become the synonymous symbol with like Alcoholics Anonymous. In that, if if you want to stop drinking, you go to AA. If you want to start a business from nothing, you go to the foundation. You don't know who the creator of AA is. It's Bill W. But not many people know that. You don't really know the creator of the foundation is Dane, but not many people know that. They just know the foundation. And um, we have I have this uh, one of the students actually made this for me. I keep it uh oh, so. below. Yeah, she made it from wood. And so it's just gorgeous and it sits here and, and so I just want that like boom, like I I need help starting a business from nothing, the foundation. And um and, and I don't want it to just be me. I want it to be you know, I, I like being center stage. I like I like having the attention because I feel like I can do a lot of great things with it. But I want to share that as much as possible. So at our next foundation meetup, we're gonna con we're gonna create a video script, and um, our successful students are gonna show up on that video script. So when you go to the foundation.com right now, it's just me and Andy on the video. So then when people buy the product, all they do is they expect me and Andy, or Andy and I, whatever the proper grammar is. Well, in this new video, we're going to have, like, you know, hey, I'm Carl, hey, I'm Amy, hey, I'm Tim, or hey, I'm Chris, or hey, I'm Kimberly, or, and, you know, uh, and we are the foundation. And then, like, the video will actually be different students talking on video that are coming back to be coaches. And, like, then I'll, I'll have, like, maybe 10% of the video time, the other 90% of the video time will be our students, because the goal of the foundation is to be a student-driven organization not a Dane-driven organization. Everything gets better as soon as I get out of the way. <laughs> Every time. The first software roundtable before it was called the foundation was called the software roundtable, and they were like, hey, when did the software roundtable really start taking off? And everyone was like, hmm, when Dane got out of the way. <laughs> no. I was, yeah, I was like, that's so true. Like, when it stopped being about me, and it started being about the students helping each other. Mm. When I got out of the way. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm an amazing starter. I start things really well. I drive, 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 drive this book, boom, getting it done. The foundation, boom, got it done right away. Paper's pipeline, boom, built eight weeks, you know, like I just drive. But as soon as it gets to a certain level, I need to get out of the way because all I do is create problems. And so this is my process of like removing myself from the foundation so that I can then just live 
in it, but not need to be in it. That's a fascinating challenge, and you know, from my perspective, if you you built Paperless Pipeline and now it runs almost entirely without any involvement from yourself, right? Yes. And if the foundation which you built runs almost entirely around yourself, somewhere splitting the difference uh, or re putting into practice uh, the principles you used for Paperless Pipeline could be an exit route from uh, from being this the name associated with the brand. And I love that. Uh, I love the analogy of AA, where nobody knows who starts it, but everybody knows when they need it and what it does and how it's useful. Uh, it's like the promise of the organization is front and center, and the people are are, are secondary. Yeah, and the Institute of Integrative Nutrition is um, one of my favorite businesses online, and I got to meet the founder, and it was so so deeply honored to meet him. Uh, uh, my partner asked him, "Hey, man, what's your unique ability?" You know, because it's all like Dan Sullivan's thing's all about finding your unique ability. And the guy, he says, "Commitment to my vision." I was like, "Damn!" And his vision is to like revolutionize healthcare, transform healthcare. And if you go to Institute of Integrative Nutrition, the video starts off, and it's like, at the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, we have one belief: that the human body can heal itself if it only knows the way. Something like that, right? And that's his vision, that the human body can heal itself if you take care of it. Or I, I don't know how, how it works, but that's the belief. So the foundation, we have a belief that you can start a business regardless of your circumstances. And then it's going to go into all these students that start businesses regardless of circumstances. And that's our belief that we live and die by. You can start a business regardless of your circumstance. It's not anyone can start a business regardless of their circumstance because I don't know if it's a 100% true statement. You know, can a guy with no arms and no legs, starving somewhere in some country. Can he do that? Well, gosh, you know, there might be a way. But, like, we, we just want to keep it as, as true as possible. It's not anyone's. You can. If you want, you can start a business regardless of your circumstance. That's powerful. And uh, and I think that's a great message to, to start to bring this to a close on. And... Uh, I want to thank you again so much for taking the time and being open and sharing fully with your experience and uh, what well, people that aren't already in the foundation might have found a very uh, unorthodox approach to removing the limiting beliefs and objections in the way to building a business and having it be successful. And I am so pleased to, to have met you. We've only known each other a year, but I feel like a kindred spirit with you and such a fan of what you're doing and can't wait to see your book uh, and see and be a part of everything that's coming next for you and for the foundation. Thanks. So it's been an honor. And uh, if you have anything you'd like to close, any parting thoughts, this would be a great time to share. All the feedback here is overwhelmingly positive, and everybody else thanks you very much for taking the time. No, you know, I just, I think, I just want to be happy, you know. Everything else is secondary. And it's not about the girl you're with, the business you have, or the money you have, or whatever thing that you're craving. Um, me personally, I just want to be happy. And so I'm still figuring that out. And sometimes I get close, and sometimes I get far away. And I just encourage you to think about, you know, like, what was the, what was that story about this? This teacher's like, what do you want to, what do you want to do when you grow up, or what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, it's like a fireman, da da da, and this, like, I'm this one kid. She's like, I just want to be happy. <laughs> like, there she go. You got it. You're like in first grade. You got the wisdom of like a sagely saint. Um, and you can be happy along the way, like. I find these times where I'm just blissed out happy, and I'm like, why am I happy right now? There's no way I should be happy right now. Dane, stop it. You are totally happy. Don't question it. You're going to get unhappy again. Like, you know, just, and, and so this is the end game, you know. Happy people attract happy people, and, you know, the foundation, look at all the loving people in the foundation that are, that are commenting on here. They're not, they're not on here. They're not, like, pencil pushing, oh, the foundation, and, like, just, like, 
glorifying his praises because of any, I don't know, ill. You know what I mean when you have these people that are like in multi-level marketing and they're like, oh, my product saves lives. And like everyone's like preaching and praising. Like they, right. all, drink, they all drink the Kool-Aid. Foundation doesn't have Kool-Aid. If, if it did, it would probably just be like, you know, unconditional love and having people's back and supporting people. So what will make you happy? Because at the end of the day, don't follow anyone else's vision for your life. Follow your own. And I'm happiest when I'm helping men connect to their feelings. We were at a conference, and this guy was selling us on why he wanted to be a mentor or advisor for the foundation. And this is a guy who a few years previously I had no access to. He's one of the big name internet marketers in the industry, very well known, 10 million plus, whatever. And I'm like, wow, we're actually like close to that field now. Like, huh. And he's talking to us and and he's like, you know, I I want to be in the foundation, I want to be a mentor, I want to be an advisor, I want to da, da, da. And about like 15 minutes goes by where he's like talking and like I feel my body just shutting down. Like I'm like, oh, why can't I feel this guy? Why can't what's going on? And I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, hey, what are you feeling right now? What's going on for you? And then he just like jolted out of it and he said, oh my gosh, I'm feeling shame. And then he started kind of welling up a little bit. He's like, I'm feeling shame because I think I'm trying to overly sell you guys. And I don't know why I'm doing that. Hmm. I don't want to overly sell you guys at all. And then he just went on for like the next half hour. It's a revelation about all the times he's been in that state trying to oversell and not know that he's just avoiding feeling shame. Or maybe he's not avoiding feeling shame, but the shame is what's going on. So in that moment, when I jolted him back into his body and I helped him identify that, we're talking like a big, powerful guy in the internet marketing industry who could have been, quote, intimidating to me uh, years ago. Um, and it's not because I have the businesses that I do that allows me to feel confident with him. It's because I know who I am that allows me to be confident. I remember again recently on a cruise, the cruise I was recently on, there was this guy there and all these girls were just head over heels for him and I ended up talking to him and I posted this on Facebook the other day, right? And he said, you know, I've slept with 200 women in 32 weeks. You know, and like his ego came out and I was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. Actually, wait, that's not that cool at all. Um, and then I asked him, I was like, well, so tell me, are you any happier? And like, He's like, oh, huh, no, no, I'm not any happier, you know? Like, so in the situation with the guy who's shame, in the situation with the guy that slept with the 200 women, both are disconnected from their feelings. That guy's sleeping with 200 women, probably disconnecting from his feelings in the process. This guy is trying to oversell us, probably disconnecting from his shame in the process. I got to help this guy connect with his shame, this guy do this, just by merely being present, just like merely knowing who I am, by merely just knowing that I help men connect to their feelings and by merely understanding that the real satisfaction and happiness in life is in the body, it's in the emotional realm, and by being so grounded in that truth, that feels really damn good. Mm. And that's what happiness looks like for me. And happiness for you could be painting. It could be... A number of things and for me I'm 30 and it took me till 30 to find this out really grounded in you know and I had to build businesses that maybe I didn't want to build Did I want to build paperless pipeline am I actually passionate about transaction management software do I give a rip about real estate brokers eh, not really but I do care about them but like do I really like am I super passionate about like hey Let's build transaction management software. Whoopee. No, but you know what? I am really passionate about helping people solve their problems. I was really, there's a lot of pain that real estate brokers had, and I wanted to help them solve that pain. I am passionate about helping people solve and remove pain from their life. And with that passion, I can go anywhere. You know, when your passion is just bird feeders or painting or music or whatever, what can you, you, you're, you, you can make it work. It really boxes you in. And if, but if you're happy, please keep doing it. So, Find what it is that makes you happy. Follow the energy. And, and if you need to build a software business 
to financially support you so you can be in your happy passion that may not make money, the foundation is a great place to do that because it's going to build a business for you so that you can go on and do bigger, better things. The foundation is not about you building a software business so you can make money. That's like the first thing. The foundation is about you building a software business so you have the financial freedom to make an impact on the world and leave a legacy that you want to leave. Because the people that join the foundation are not the people that are looking to make money. They're looking to make a dent in the universe. They're looking to leave a legacy. They're looking to have an impact. They're looking, looking to leave the world a little better than they left it. They're not just in it to make some software company for themselves for money. Because they know that's just like a, if the fulfillment spectrum was like this, you, you becoming financially free is right here. The rest of the fulfillment's over here. Why else did I create the foundation other than for my own personal path of fulfillment? So I could probably ramble quite a bit more, but uh, we can curtail it there. Well, it's an incredible, uh, incredible closing thoughts and, and very inspirational, too. And maybe uh, here's a lighthearted comment to show that you may already be well on your way towards uh, one of your goals removing yourself from the foundation. So the foundation is awesome. First, Dean's coolness uh, drew me in, but now the foundation content and community is the greatest value. Dean, you're secondary, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, that makes me feel really happy. Like, you have no idea. Like, that takes so much pressure off me. <sighs> Excellent. <laughs> Maybe it could be, like, tertiary or... Quartiary, or however that stuff works. I'll see if it'll update here in a second. Maybe you can be tertiary. <laughs> Two steps down from the driver's seat. Yeah, man. I just want to be happy. Like, there's, you know, I remember, you know, I'm hanging out and I'm like in a needy space and I'm like, gosh, won't people give me attention? This is just like weeks ago. Won't people give me attention? Like, won't people be this to me? And then, I would, then for some reason, like, boom, inspiration hit me and I was like completely happy, completely fulfilled, completely whole in that moment. I was like, gosh, what do I want to do from here? And I was like, I want to go give people exactly what I was so desperate to receive. And not only did I want to give people what I was so desperate to receive, it actually felt way, way better. So this lady was walking next to me and I look over to the right of her and I said, hey, sweetheart, come here. And I put my arm around her, and I pull her in, and I walk with my arm around her, and she just melts and glows, and, like, we have this amazing connection, and she doesn't want to leave my side, and it was awesome. And, like, I, there was nothing other than just, like, the complete sharing of love in that moment. And that state that state's available to, to anyone. Like, there's, there's, you know, I was at the chiropractor the other day, and it was, like, two days after splitting... Um, with my girlfriend at the time, and um, I'm, a, I'm, so I'm supposedly 27 times more sensitive than the average, average man. And I'm supposedly one of a 1,000 men on the planet with this ability. Different spiritual or intuitive perspective, perspective or... I, like, I don't, I don't <laughs> even know. You know I just, so some spiritual intuitive was just telling me these numbers, and I was like, okay, well, that's whatever. Like, but what really rang true for me is I'm just extra super sensitive, you know. And if it's 27 times, whatever. The fact is I'm super sensitive. Sitting in the chiropractor, there's this, there's this other there's lady sitting next to me. She's not physically attractive to me. Um, maybe her teeth are a little more dirty. She's overweight, sweatpants, a re really baggy tie-dye shirt. And in, in the past, you know, you know, ego-based Dane or Dane looking to get fulfillment from people would probably never even consider just even, like, acknowledging her. You know, probably just might even be disgusted by her, which makes me so sad because that would be my own, my own disgust to myself. Anyway, she's got her hand behind her back, and she's like, oh. and I look over and I said, wow, I feel your back pain from over here. How are you? He says, oh, you know, I'm hanging in there. And I say, hey, weird question that you probably don't get right away, but do you believe in God? And she said, yes. And I said, would you like me to pray for you? She says, yes. I'm in a waiting room at a chiropractor with a lady I just met. Now, so social traditions might tell you that you shouldn't be talking to people like this. Social traditions might, might say, you know, you're in, a, you're in a waiting room, you sit there and you wait for the doctor. But you know what? An open, expanded, unconditionally loving heart is just like wants to melt the world and connect with everyone. And so I, I walk over to her, I put my hand on my shoulder, say a prayer for her. Oh, like tears just streaming down my face. 
you know, the prayer along the lines of letting her know how loved she is, how safe she is. <laughs> Here I go. And about a minute of a prayer. And I, ha I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, so I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go to the bathroom and get some Kleenex now. And, you know, she laughs. And, and then she goes to the chiropractor. And then she come, walks out. And then I go into the chiropractor. And the doctor's like, you're an amazing man. I saw what you did out there. And I, the validation was cool. Like, I didn't need that from him. It was whatever. I was like, oh, wow, you saw it. Yeah, like, I actually don't care that you said that at all. Like, I don't need to know that I'm an amazing man right now because I know that that was me. Then I walk out of the chiropractor office, and I'm walking home, and this beat-up pickup truck drives up next to me. Very similar to kind of how the girl was dressed, this pickup truck. And this guy said, God bless you. And I was like, kind of got scared. I look over, and this guy with a beard, and who is that guy? And then I see his daughter sitting next to him, the girl I prayed over. Mm. And he's like, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And I, I was like, ah, yeah, you're welcome, thank you. Um, and and uh, then they drove off. But I, I didn't, I didn't think anything special of what I did. You know, I was just like, I want to pray for this gal. And so I did. And then she left, and she waited, and she told her dad. And they waited like 10 minutes for me to leave so they could tell me thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, that so deeply touched her. That moment. Yeah. It's not common to see somebody so open and, and, and exposed with people that you just meet or in public places. I think it had a ripple effect on the clearly everybody around. Oh. If it wasn't for for the doctor's praise or for her dad to say thank you, of course it wasn't for those reasons. But auxiliary to being who you were in that moment, uh, sensitive to her needs, it's it's so wonderful to see that aspect of humanity. What well what the ego grasps for and clings for and fights to the death for comes in spades when you surrender it and come from a loving space. Like, whatever it is you're trying to cling and grasp for, as soon as the ego is surrendered and you're just in a totally unconditionally loving space, the rewards, you change your world. Like, imagine me sitting in that room and being like, gosh, woe is me. Like, I just broke up with my girlfriend two days ago. I'm so sad. I'm so depressed. Blah, blah, like instead I do one unconditionally loving act and the whole like the engine it changes the fabric of the entire existence for the next ten minutes and like that's that's the juice for me. And so leaving you with comment, you know, I just want to fill you guys with stories like this so you can carry them into your life. So that you know that this kind of life can be available to you. It's possible for for you to be at a at a Home Depot and, and see somebody really stressed about picking something out and I don't know, asking them if they want a hug. That might be kind of weird, but I would probably still try it. You know, I remember being at a gas station, and there was this bigger black lady, and, like, for some reason, you know, I wanted to give her a hug. And I was like, hey, would you like a hug? And she was like, uh, why? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I just, I feel like you're an awesome person, and I would like to give you a hug. And she's like, ah. okay. And so I gave her a hug. And then, like, I was like, would you like one too? Or her, like, her partner in the car said, no, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't... You just got to put the free hug sign around your neck and walk around downtown. Yeah, I just didn't give a shit. And, like, she just... You know, if she would have said no, I would have been unfazed. Like, you, you can't reject joy. Like, joy doesn't understand rejection. It's just, like, cool with whatever. So, you can, like... Imagine a life where you could live like this all the time. You know, I got to tell myself that because... That's all I want to do all day. You know, ideally we build the foundation into a college campus. Ideally we build the foundation into its own university, like a beautifully constructed, privately funded uh, college-type campus with 5,000 to 10,000 students that are coming year-round to be in an environment of unconditional love, to be emotionally connected, and to be starting businesses from nothing, 
to be connected to an, an entire sphere, an entire family that has nothing more than your best interests at heart. And then I get to walk around in like a professor's coat with like patches on my elbows, with my hands behind my back, and just walk around and show love all day long. That is Dane's happiness right there. Um. I think you'll realize that long before you need a long uh, patchwork coat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might, I might still wear it even if I'm, you know, there you three, go. three or whatever. <laughs> so, like, a couple years from now. Yeah. Uh, what a, <laughs> That's it, a couple years. Yeah. Man, what a great conversation. Um, what interesting perspectives and some really heartfelt and inspirational stories. Want to uh, thank you again on behalf of everybody else that's listening for being so available and dropped in and sharing. And uh, and I appreciate you. And we're you know, it's just a, a, a blessing to have you in my life. So mm. with that, just one of the things I love that you have is the is that you have this personality profile where. You take entrepreneurs' personality thing, and then you kind of help match a business to their personality. I really like. I did. I kind of like. I judged you a little bit. I was like, "Oh, this guy, another make business online guy." Like, I kind of disregarded you at first, like I told you. And then I found out about your past, and then I found out about your personality process, and I was like, "Whoa, this guy's amazing!" And it only came from an amazing heart. So. I just want to publicly acknowledge you here as well. Like that personality thing's awesome, and it came from someone who built, who was awesome themselves that built it. And dude, much love. Dude, appreciate that. Yep, the journey of a lifestyle entrepreneur coming back to the U.S. coming out in the next couple months has definitely been an around the world adventure spanning the last decade for me personally. And part of my joy right now is being able to feature and give a, a platform for other people to truly embody the same ethos of having a business that supports a lifestyle of travel, opportunity, freedom, and creative expression, uh, no matter how that appears and shows up for you personally, which is the personality, pardon the identity um, discussion that we have at the beginning of the book. So excited for uh, all that's to come and thankful for all that past. And, and let me say quick, I should probably say if you want some cool stuff, go to thefoundation.com. <laughs> oh yeah, we dropped that in and uh, I'll make sure everybody gets uh, a link and we'll update this page with some of the uh, paperless pipeline you mentioned and a couple of the other uh, links and sites for everybody that wants to check out the replay. Cool. I'm like creating, I'm like committing a marketing sin right now by not being like, if you'd like a six step action guide to blah blah blah. No. <laughs> If you want to have fun, come to the foundation. <laughs> That's what I'll stay with. <laughs> great, great plug. Great end. Um, thanks a lot, Dane. I really appreciate you and talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>